The year 1992 was a campaign year, with much of the news surrounding Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton. It was also the year that a third-party candidate would have a major impact as they ran for president. The year was also filled with emotional events that would have many questioning inequality in its aftermath. 1992 was a pivotal year in music as well. For the first time, CDs outsold audio cassettes, and what was everyone listening to? By the end of the year, it would be a movie soundtrack that would take Whitney Houston to a new level. To start out the year, on January 8th, President George Bush was attending a banquet hosted by the Japanese Prime Minister. During the dinner, Bush became ill and vomited on the Prime Minister's lap and then fainted. Doctors would later attribute the incident to a case of acute gastroenteritis. On January 26th, on the TV show 60 Minutes, Democrat presidential candidate Bill Clinton denied allegations by Jennifer Flowers that they had a 12-year affair. The following day, Flowers held a press conference in which she played tape recordings she had secretly made of phone calls between her and Clinton to prove that he was lying. On February 10th, Mike Tyson was convicted in Indiana of raping an 18-year-old beauty pageant contestant named Desiree Washington. The following month, the former heavyweight boxing champion would be sentenced to 10 years in prison. On February 14th, the comedy film Wayne's World starring Mike Myers and Dana Carvey was released in theaters. The movie was based on their Saturday Night Live sketch and it featured the Queen song, Bohemian Rhapsody, which propelled it to number two on the U.S. singles charts nearly 20 years after its first release. On February 20th, Texas billionaire Ross Perot announced his willingness to run for president on Larry King Live. The independent outsider's bid for the presidency transformed the political and electoral landscape and was a wake-up call to politicians on both sides of the aisle. On April 6th, the purple sing-along dinosaur named Barney premiered on PBS in a new kids show titled Barney and Friends. Just three months after Barney and Friends debuted, it was more popular than the long-running children's show Sesame Street. On April 13th, soft drink company Pepsi began test marketing their new drink, Crystal Pepsi, in Sacramento, Providence, Denver, Dallas, and Grand Rapids. The clear drink was an attempt to revive slow sales with a new version that tasted much like original Pepsi, minus the caramel coloring. On April 29th, a jury in Simi Valley, California acquitted four LA police officers accused of using excessive force in the videotaped beating of black driver Rodney King. Fury over the verdict spilled over into the streets resulting in five days of rioting in Los Angeles, which led to 53 deaths and $1 billion in damage. It also ignited a national conversation about racial and economic disparity and the excessive use of force by police officers. On May 19th, in Massapequa, New York, Teenager Amy Fisher walked up to the front door of the home of her 38-year-old lover, Joey Buttafuoco, and knocked on the door. When his wife, Mary Jo, answered the door, she shot her in the face, but she would survive. Instantly, Amy became known as the Long Island Lolita, and the sensationalized story spread across the country. The story played out in tabloids for months and would eventually be made into multiple TV movies. On May 22nd, after 30 years, Johnny Carson retired as the host of NBC's The Tonight Show. The final show highlighted notable guests and musicians that appeared on the show over the previous three decades, along with heartfelt words from Ed McMahon, Doc Severinsen, and Johnny Carson himself. A few days later, Jay Leno would take over as the new host.
On June 15th, during a spelling bee at a Trenton, New Jersey elementary school, Vice President Dan Quayle erroneously corrected a student's spelling of the word potato, indicating it should have an E at the end. The blunder was embarrassing and led to widespread ridicule. On July 16th, Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton was nominated for president and Tennessee Senator Al Gore for vice president at the Democratic National Convention held in New York City. On August 8th, during the Barcelona Olympics, the original basketball dream team won the gold medal with a win over Croatia. The team featured pro superstars Michael Jordan, Magic Johnson, Larry Bird, Scottie Pippen, Charles Barkley, and many others. On August 11th, the largest shopping mall in the U.S., the Mall of America, opened in Bloomington, Minnesota. The mall had hundreds of stores and 50 restaurants, but also had the nation's largest indoor amusement park. On August 24th, the small but powerful Hurricane Andrew blasted ashore about 20 miles southwest of Miami, Florida with winds topping 165 miles per hour. The Category 5 hurricane killed 65 people and was the costliest hurricane to ever hit the U.S., causing $27.3 billion in damage. On October 3rd, after performing the Bob Marley song War on Saturday Night Live, Singer Sinead O'Connor held up a photo of Pope John Paul II and ripped it up, causing a huge controversy. The unscripted moment caught SNL producers off guard, and it led to thousands of complaints over the following days. On October 8th, the video game Mortal Kombat was released in arcades across the country. The revolutionary fighting game was incredibly lifelike, and the gory graphic details had never been seen before in a game. The outcome was an arcade game that every kid wanted to play. On October 16th, the original and never before aired Gilligan's Island pilot, which was filmed in 1964, aired for the first time on TBS. The pilot, intended only for network executives viewing, revealed how the SS Minnow ran aground and it starred only four actors who later appeared in the series. On November 3rd, Arkansas Governor Bill Clinton defeated incumbent President George Bush and businessman Ross Perot to become the President of the United States. This election marked the end of a long period of Republican dominance that began in 1968. On November 25th, the Bodyguard, starring Kevin Costner and Whitney Houston, opened in theaters. It went on to become the second highest grossing film of the year and had a soundtrack that became the biggest selling soundtrack of all time. Whitney Houston's cover of Dolly Parton's song, I Will Always Love You, would also go on to become the biggest selling female single ever. On December 4th, President George Bush ordered 28,000 U.S. troops to Civil War-ravaged Somalia in what he considered a humanitarian mission. The move was supported by leaders in Congress and also incumbent President Bill Clinton. To close out the year, on December 28th, the first of four children died following an outbreak of E. coli at the fast food chain Jack in the Box. 73 Jack in the Box restaurants were affected in California, Idaho, Washington, and Nevada. The outbreak ended up killing four kids under 10 years old and injured 178, leaving many with kidney and brain damage. <laughs>